With the 2024 New Brunswick provincial election underway and voters gearing up to head to the polls on October 21st, today's episode of Municipal Affairs is focused on what municipalities in the province are hoping to hear or have already heard from party leaders on critical issues affecting local governments. Our guest today is Andrew Black, president of the Union of Municipalities of New Brunswick, and we'll be discussing the pressing concerns raised by New Brunswick's municipalities as they call for a new fiscal framework and greater collaboration with the next provincial government. Recently, UMNB released a pivotal report authored by Dr. Craig Brett, an economics professor at Mount Allison University. The report highlights an alarming funding gap for local governments in New Brunswick, estimated at $200 million annually. This gap is compounded by a $2.5 billion infrastructure deficit, a $40 million reduction in municipal grants, and an increased reliance on residential property taxes. The municipal organization is reiterating its call for parties to close that gap and ensure that the provincial communities are funded adequately and substantially over the long term. Now, among the solutions proposed in the report called Towards a New Fiscal Framework for New Brunswick Municipalities is a transfer of one point of the harmonized sales tax to municipalities aimed at addressing operational issues and the growing infrastructure deficit, an arrangement already in place in provinces such like Quebec and, yes, even Saskatchewan. The municipalities aren't just concerned about finances, though. They are also calling for greater collaboration on key issues such as housing affordability and policing. Now, as we sit down with President Black, we'll be discussing all these topics and these critical matters, including the organization's call for a comprehensive provincial policing review and a commitment from the parties to build the right kinds of housing to support New Brunswick's ever-growing population. So, what are municipalities hoping to see in this party's platform this year? And what are the commitments do they expect to hear from the leaders vying to form the next provincial government? Let's find out. Attention Saskatchewan. This election season, Municipal Affairs is hitting the road in partnership with SUMA for the Saskatchewan provincial election. Join us on election night for live coverage straight from Regina, on YouTube featuring exclusive insights from municipal leaders and stakeholders across the province. We will be capturing their reaction to the results and be diving into what the new provincial government means for municipalities. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan to hear directly from local leaders about the issues that matter most to you. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan starting September 30th to hear directly from local leaders like yourself about the issues that matter most. This is your election covered like never before. Municipal Affairs, your trusted voice from the grassroots to the government. Andrew, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, The election is on and the party leaders are crisscrossing the province of New Brunswick. Earlier this summer, actually about mid-August, the Union of Municipalities of New Brunswick released their request for the party leaders to work more collaboratively with municipalities if they were to form government after October 21st. Have you heard anything or are you hearing from the party leaders since the start of the election on your calls to work more collaboratively? collaboratively with the prior uh with the municipalities um yeah we have so we had a our candidates forum that was put on by the union of municipalities of new brunswick as well as the francophone association which is our sister association here in uh, new brunswick um we had that candidates forum on the 19th of september so we had um susan holt the liberal leader um david coon the green party leader and um uh, the minister, Minister Glenn Savoy, who is the Minister of Local Government, uh, in place of the Premier who declined to come. Uh, all three of them had had made promises to work more collaboratively, not just with municipalities, but with the municipal associations as well, in varying degrees. 
this comes your your call to work more collaboratively comes after a report was authored uh, with the partnership with the union called towards a new fiscal framework for uh, New Brunswick municipalities. This was authored by I'm just going to make sure I get the name of the gentleman correct, Dr. Craig Brett, uh, an economic yeah. professor at Mount Allison University. Now I've read the 27 page report because I'm that type of nerd who actually reads these type of reports, and what I found staggering is uh, in it it says that municipalities today are underfunded by about $200 million annually when it comes to infrastructure. That on top of a $2.5 billion infrastructure deficit already. Uh, are you hoping that the party platforms will address this shortfall or are you hearing from the party leaders from that forum or even one-on-one -on -one conversations with yourself that they're willing to address this? Uh, yeah, again, all three of them um made reference to it. It was one of the main questions that we asked during the candidates forum. Uh, it was the first question we asked, of course, about the fiscal future of municipalities in the, in the province. Um, just quickly going back to the collaboratively, working collaboratively, one of the big things that's been missing is uh, a recognition that local governments are partners. We're not stakeholders. You know, we're, we're not, uh, you know, we are a level of government and we needed to be treated as such. Um, that's been something we've been pushing for for quite some time. Um, and so that's what we're looking for when it when it comes to more collaborative efforts. Anyway, so the fiscal reform piece, yes, all three of them have addressed it. All three of them um, want to see it happen. It's just a matter of when. So the Minister of Local Government, uh, who is representing the PC party, of course, is always is on the defense because they're the current government. So they have to answer for where they're at. The fiscal reform uh, conversation has already happened, has, sorry, has started. And there is a process through a working group that is that is ongoing. Whereas with the Greens and the Liberals, they are promising to address this immediately and in any way they possibly can. Uh, so... The Liberals, for example, day one of their mandate is going to be uh, addressing the fiscal uh, reform piece and shortfalls within municipalities, reaching out to municipalities and, and uh, associations to have that conversation. So I, I, I want to go back to the collaboration part that you just mentioned a little bit, because I did a deep dive on all the candidates that were listed on every single one of the three major party uh, uh, lead, uh, websites. And what I found was staggering, and this is staggering from my perspective because I'm a municipal nerd this way, about roughly over 10 of the candidates who are running for the New Brunswick Liberals have former municipal experience. Same for the Progressive Conservatives, about a handful for the Greens. Do you think with the municipal experience that some of these candidates are bringing to the table, that that collaborative approach that you're hoping for as the president of your organization will actually be addressed if even a handful of these candidates do get elected because they will know what municipalities or administrations from municipalities are facing? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I am hopeful. I, I, I hope that that municipal experience lends itself positively to that um, to that ongoing effort around collaboration. I would I would suspect that if you had uh, experience on the ground in municipal government, that that would translate um, to a provincial seat. And more specifically, with the realization of where municipalities and local governments are now in that uh, relationship, which is um, again, more of a, a partner, sorry, more of a stakeholder uh, rather than being recognized as a full partner within the tripartite governance structure. What's step one for the municipalities after October 21st? Cabinet will need to be sworn in, a new government will have to be sworn in, but what is the first step that the union is looking for the next government to do? Is it to offer a sit down conversation to start that collaborative work or is there something that you're specifically looking for? I think it'll be it would be it would be two things. I guess initially it would be reaching out immediately to to all of the new um uh, people who have been elected, so all of the new MLAs in the in the uh, in the province, uh, new new or returning, I should say, anybody who's gotten in, we should we would reach out, um, and the party leader, so that would initially start that sort of collaborative uh, approach. Um, but really, the big point is to make sure. 
that where we are currently in the fiscal reform process, that there's a recognition that we have gotten to, you know, X point, and we want that to continue. We don't want to step back. We don't want to start the process over again. We want from day one, we want to make sure that that fiscal reform conversation continues from where we've left off with this current government. Municipalities today are being more asked to rely more and more on property taxes going forward because infrastructure funding grants are not being doled out as they used to be. Uh, This is not just a call that the union needs to make to the province, but the federal government as well. Do you get a sense? Because I know uh, the FCM, which you are part of just recently in Ottawa, do you get a sense that the province and the federal government are willing to work together? Or was there conversations with the party leaders to work with the federal government on this new fiscal framework? Uh, I mean, that's that's a piece of it, certainly. Um, But really, the fiscal report focused on the reality that municipalities are facing in the province, more specifically with regards to being properly funded at the provincial level. Now, the provincial government in their budget, which was included in the fiscal report, obviously gets uh, money from the federal government, right? They they get money from the federal government to be able to do the things they need to do. So part of their budget is that reliance on that relationship with the federal government. But really for us, it's it's the provincial piece. What can the what can the province do? What responsibility do they have to ensure that municipalities are properly funded now and into the future? to make their communities sustainable and vibrant. Um, That being said, there has been some, you know, the the, the relationship between the provincial government and the federal government at at periods over the last few years has been strained, um, partly due to the fact that we have a liberal federal government and a conservative uh, provincial uh, government. So, you know, playing politics, that, that does happen. But I would say that you know, the most recent announcement with the uh, Canada Community Building Fund, the former gas tax, that uh, that settlement between the province and the federal government has now been completed. Um, it was looking a little dicey. The provincial government and the two municipal associations banded together to write a letter to the federal government to make sure that that, uh, that structure was kept in place. So, you know, there, there is a relationship there between the three levels of government. But around the fiscal piece, it's really the concentration of what can the province do to help municipalities and therefore help the province. On the last thing on the fiscal part of the conversation, one of the areas of recommendation that the report and the union is asking the next government to do is to take 1% of the harmonized sales tax, which is the HST, like Quebec and Saskatchewan does, and give it directly to municipalities to split up into infrastructure revenue or uh, infrastructure spending and then also sort of the cost that already of already existing infrastructure projects um i hate to ask the same question over and over again but at the forum did you hear from the three parties the three party representatives that they're willing to engage in this discussion because giving over one percent of a tax is often hard for some governments yeah uh well yes and no i i would say just to be to be frank um, the PC party did not commit to that, but instead talked about how the uh, fiscal reform working group, so that conversation, is ongoing. Um, so finding out what the reality is, working on solutions that may not be a one-size-fits-all kind of structure. So that's the response from the PC uh, party. Um, the Liberals and the Greens uh, were more committed to looking at 1% of HST, realizing that that would be um, a, a solution. Um, but I think one of the things that's important to to keep in mind is, you know, we, we're looking at that structure, or that, that possibility for funding, because it doesn't put any additional b- burden on current residents of New Brunswick, right? So as you said, we get most of our revenue from residential on average across the province. It's about 84% in Tantramar and my municipality, it's higher. It's like 92 or 93%. It just depends on your funding sources. Um, So to, to ask for money that would, that would come from taxation is a little more difficult than to have this reliable source of revenue that does not impact taxpayers day to day, Um, that would then support those communities and and what they need to do. 
I want to turn to the next, uh, the, the other big topic that municipalities are looking for the next uh, provincial government to address, and that's policing. Uh, the union, alongside your sister organizations, have called for a review of the policing services in New Brunswick. Now, I've sat down with many of your members, and policing seems to be a topic that comes up on a more regular basis, along with infrastructure. Why is this important to do it now? Be is, it, is there something coming down the stream that you're not looking forward to? Or is there a more macro issue going on with policing in New Brunswick that most people may, may not be aware of? Well, I, I guess, you know, we've, we've always been, as you say, we've always been talking about this. It's, a, it's an, an issue that is, is constant with us. Um, it is one of our four, um, it's one of our, our big pillars within our election strategy. Um, Unfortunately, we didn't get to that question in the candidates forum. That's okay. Um, but to your to your question, it's important to keep it top of mind when we're going into an election season because we want to make sure that the party leaders understand that there is concern out there in the public um, around policing. It could be costs of policing, which is a huge one, um, on but stemming from that level of service, um, level of response time. Um, and then, you know, th those are connected because if you're paying a lot of money for police services, then you want to make sure that your communities are adequately serviced. Uh, going into the future, we also we, all, we also want some protection around uh, the cost increases of policing and what that might look like. So is there something coming down the pipe? Not necessarily. There is contract renegotiation, of course, um, but uh, it, not really necessarily is there anything coming down the pipe. That being said, the provincial current provincial government um, and the well, I guess it's not current because we're in election time, but the the PC government with the Minister of uh, Public Safety and Justice ha uh, has a mandate to increase the provincial policing service agreement members by I think eighty over the next two years. So again, keeping the provincial government's feet in the fire to say we need those those police officers so that we can adequately police our communities. Is this is this a pillar that's more aimed at the more rural municipalities? Because traditionally, more urban, you, that response time isn't something that I, I don't want to say applicable, but is not something that people are to, on top of mind. But rural communities that police have to go forty five minutes to a half hour to go to a call that could be life and death situation there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we have well, I guess we have more than two, but we our main two main um, policing structures within the, the province are the provincial policing service agreement, which is basically the bulk of the province, the municipal policing service agreement, which is a direct contract with the federal government. There's only a few of those in the province, Tantramar, my community being one of them. And then there's municipal police forces. So it is a concern more for the MPSA and PPSA members. Um, even more so for the PPSA. So they're the rural communities that, that get serviced by uh, RCMP, where the distances are far between. It's difficult to have police officers on the scene in a timely fashion. Um, anyway, so that, that's a concern. That being said, you know, a, a major city like Moncton, for example, might not have the same concerns around policing. But at the end of the day, the price of policing it affects everybody across the board, whether you have a municipal police, municipal police force or an RCMP force. Um, before we turn to, to wrapping up, I've got to ask the sort of local question to you as the mayor of your community. Is there anything that you're looking for outside of the presidency, but as mayor of Tantramar, that you're looking for the party leaders or even the local candidates? Because truly the local candidates are the one who will be your voices that they will address from a municipal standpoint uh, during this election. Um, well, beyond what UMNB has asked for, um, because, you know, the, what the association is looking for is concerns that, that all municipalities are sort of looking at. So beyond, you know, fiscal capacity, housing issues, policing review, those kinds of things, um, are two big, two really big concerns. I guess maybe I'll do three, um, infrastructure and, and being properly funded, um, UMNB has also covered that, but I want to just emphasize that. Um, the Shiknecto Isthmus issue, 
which is the the big uh, the big issue around here. If the dikes breach, then our community is inundated with water, and it causes massive devastation. Um, you were in front of the Senate talking about that just recently. Yes, this year, that's right. You? Yeah. And then the other piece is uh, we have a, a historic covered bridge that has been shut down by DTI in our community that directly impacts many, many of the farmers within our community, not just farmers, but everyone, but farmers specifically. Um, and I, I want some promise from the local representatives that that bridge will be reopened um, and will be structurally sound for modern agricultural needs. Good to hear. So I'll hopefully check back in before the before election day to see if you got any confirmation on that from the <laughs> local candidates. Um, municipal issues don't traditionally get talked about a lot at the dinner table when it comes to provincial elections. Now, the Union of Municipalities of New Brunswick have started a Municipalities Matters campaign on social media because I've been following it. And it seems to be trying to make sure people talk about these issues, policing, infrastructure, funding. How do you ensure as president, as mayor, that people ask these questions to their local candidates? Because you can ask the party leaders, but the local candidates need to make up a governing caucus. How do you ensure the municipal issues stay forefront during this campaign up until October 21st? I mean, I guess the only thing we can do is really just put it out there as much as we can, get it out on social media, get it out in newsletters, um, as I'm talking to people, bring up these issues. The, the, the difficulty with it is that there is, um, and it, you know, it doesn't have, it's not anyone's fault per se. Maybe if they taught civics in school, uh, maybe that would be a better thing. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the problem is, is that a lot of people don't understand government. They don't understand federal or provincial government, um, but they really don't understand municipal government and what it means to uh, operate a, a community. Um, and so I, I think having, I, I guess it's a two-pronged, like it, 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 it covers two things. It covers the current election strategy and what people should be talking about uh, from, uh, from a municipal perspe perspective, but it also is that education piece. You know, why are communities talking about infrastructure? What does that even mean? Well, to the regular taxpayer, uh, it means a lot. It means that your town is adequately serviced and things aren't falling into disrepair. And that, that comes, you know, directly back to being able to provide services to the community that they require. Last question before I let you go here, Andrew. We we are in early days of this election. It was just called on Friday, and we're still early days from when people are going to get out and vote. What's the one message that you hope residents of New Brunswick across the province take away from your advocacy work that the union is doing around municipal issues that they can sort of address to the local candidates? Well, I guess without pinpointing on a specific topic. Uh, because that's difficult, especially for, you know, voters just generally, I would say the most important message would be to get out and vote. Um, on top of that, I would say also just try to be involved. Um, you know, look at what your community needs, look at what your community um, is lacking potentially, or maybe what they're celebrating and talk about those things with your local candidates, like be involved and get out and vote. Um, I think that that's the most important piece to, to pick something specific that people should be interested in or look at is, is a difficult one, but I guess, you know, the, the, the message that municipalities are not adequately funded. So, you know, if you want some more research on that, there's plenty out there, but that's maybe a, a message from the union. I would say is that, taxpayers municipalities are not adequately funded and we're here for you and we're trying to do things uh to make it better for for communities across the province um that's an excellent way to end this interview but i should just let everyone know the link to the brett report that we just talked about during the interview will be in the show notes so if you want to go read it it's a it's an easy i shouldn't say it's an easy read it's an eye-opening read to say the least but it's a read that i think all people should be doing because this infrastructure issue is not going away tomorrow no matter who gets elected so we'll see what happens andrew it's always a pleasure to sit down with you thank you so much always a pleasure thanks chris appreciate it
Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Fair. We hope you've enjoyed today's conversation with Andrew Black, the president of the Union of Municipalities of New Brunswick. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upcoming episode. Your support helps us to continue to grow and bring you more important conversations like you heard today. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you right back here on Municipal Affairs. Till next time.